Too Good to Be True, The Colossal Book of Urban Legends by Jan Harold Brombard. Chapter 7, Accidents Will Happen, Legend Number 4, The Barrel of Bricks. I am writing in response to your request for additional information. Is block number three of the accident reporting from in block number three of that of the accident reporting form I put trying to do the job alone as the cause of my accident. You said in your letter that I should explain more fully and I trust that the following details will be sufficient. I'm a bricklayer by trade. On the date of the accident, I was working alone on the roof of a new six-story building. When I completed my work, I discovered that I had about 500 pounds of brick left over. Rather than carry the bricks down by hand, I decided to lower them in a barrel by using a pulley which fortunately was attached to the side of the building at the sixth floor. Securing the rope and at ground level, I went up to the roof, swung the barrel out and loaded the brick into it. Then I went back to the ground and untied the rope, holding it tightly to secure to insecure to, to ensure the low descent of the five hundred pounds of brick. You will note in block number 11 of the accident report form that I weigh 135 pounds. Due to my surprise to being jerked off the gut off the ground so suddenly, I lost my presence of mind and forgot to let go of the rope. Needless to say, I proceeded at a rather rapid rate up the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, I met the barrel coming down. This explains the fractured skull and broken collarbone. Slowly, only slightly, I continued my rapid ascent, not stopping until the fingers of my right hand were two knuckles deep into the pulley. Fortunately, by this time, I had regained my presence of mind and was able to hold tightly to the rope in spite of my pain. At approximately the same time, however, the barrel of bricks hit the ground and the bottom fell out of the barrel. Devoid of the weight of the bricks, the barrel now weighs approximately 50 pounds. I refer you again to my weight in block 11. As you might imagine, I began to... Uh, I began a rapid descent down the side of the building. In the vicinity of the third floor, floor I met the barrel going up, up. I met the barrel coming up. This accounts for the two fractured ankles and the lacerations of my legs and lower body. The encounter with the barrel slowed me enough to loosen my injuries when I fell onto the pile of bricks. Unfortunately, only three vertebrae, ver vertebrae were cracked. I am sorry to report, however, that as I lay there on the bricks, in pain, unable to stand, and watching the empty barrel swing six stories above me, I again lost presence of mind and let go of the rope. The empty barrel weighted more than the rope, so it came back down on me and broke my legs. I hope I have furnished this information you require as how the accident occurred. Quoted verbatim from a faded, undated sheet produced on a dot matrix printer and distributed in a San Antonio, Texas insurance company, the Barrel of Bricks, one of the most often produced, reproduced pieces of typescript law, has also been presented as a stage monologue 
and an oral announcement in song and poetic form as a cartoon in countless and in countless handwritten and printed copies distributed in person on bulletin boards via fax and as email some versions are organized with numbered points as a formal memo or report and may conclude I respectively request sick leave besides insurance companies this item has circulated in the military and in such trades as building construction, oil drilling, manufacturing plants, radio tower erection. No, not that kind of erection, you sick minded fox. And even among collectors of old glass insulations or telephone poles, the American comedian Fred Allen turned it into a radio skit popular in the 1930s and 40s. What the British humorist Gerard Hopnung, what a name, delivered his version from the stage and in recordings during the 1950s. The Down East humorist, Bert and I recorded it in 1961. In 1966, a version purporting to be from a native workman employed by the US Army in Vietnam was widely published both in newspapers and in such periodicals as Playboy, Games and National Lampoon. The song renditions of the Barrel and the Bricks, titled either Dear Boss or Why Paddy's Not at Work Today, have been performed and recorded by numerous folk and popular singers. At the University of Georgia, the story is used by members of the... Demosthenian... Literary Society, a group founded in 1803 as a supposedly true story to make fun of their on-campus rivals. The Phi Kappa Literary Society, a short version of the story in Irish dialect, appeared in 1918 in a 1918 joke book published in Pits in Pittsburgh. And some later treatments have preserved the ethnic stereotype, for example, a fake memo from Bethlehem Steel in nineteen eighty four gave two participants names as Vito Luciano and Giovanni Spagatini. <laughs> the whole name has spaghetti in it. <laughs> oh, Spagatini. No, it doesn't. Cowboy poet Waddy Mitchell's versified version involving a whiskey barrel Full of Horseshoes was published in Mother Earth News January slash February 1990. In Curses Broiled Again, I furnish a detailed debunking of a version alleged to have been written by a Jewish Revolutionary War Corporal to General Washington in 1776. Perhaps the ancestor of all these story, all of these stories, is a traditional European folk tale, in which a wolf and two animals descend or arise from a well in two buckets strung at either end of a long rope hung over a pulley. And that, (laughs) 
was the legend of the barrel of bricks. Next time, up a tree. Until then, thanks for watching.